Welcome my friends. I'm so excited because in this video we get to talk about the standard normal distribution, sometimes called the Z distribution. So let's go ahead and get started. The standard normal, or more oftentimes called the Z distribution, is just a normal distribution with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. Whereas with a typical distribution, we might use X to represent our variable, for the standard normal distribution, we're going to use Z. Since the mean is zero, we can put a Z value of zero right in the middle of our distribution. Typically, when we're drawing the lines on a normal distribution, we're going to be counting by the standard deviation, which is one in this case. So we'll have Z equals one, two, and three as we move towards the right, and we'll have negative one, negative two, and negative three as we move towards the left. Values on the Z distribution are what we call Z scores. And they tell us how many standard deviations away from the mean a value is on a corresponding X distribution. What I mean by this is typically you will not be thinking about a Z distribution in isolation. There's not very many variables that have a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. No, typically you'll be thinking about the Z distribution as it relates to a corresponding X distribution. For example, let's say that our distribution of X represents a normal distribution with a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of five. Well, if that's the case, we can place the values in the corresponding places on the normal distribution. The mean in this case is 50, which is going to correspond to an X value of 50 right in the middle of the distribution. Then we'll be counting by fives to go up the distribution, 55, 60, and 65, and counting down by fives to go to the left, 45, 40, and 35. Now we would say that each of these X values has a corresponding Z value or a corresponding Z score. For example, the X value of 55 corresponds to a Z score of one, which means that the value of 55 is one standard deviation above the mean. This makes a lot of sense because 55 is one tick mark from the right of the mean, which represents one standard deviation above the mean. Here's another example. The value of x equals 40 corresponds to the z-score of negative 2, meaning that 40 is two standard deviations below the mean. Any of the negative z-scores are going to represent standard deviations below the mean, and any positive z-scores will represent standard deviations above the mean. Now we call values on the z-distribution z-scores, and it turns out that we have a special name for values on the x-distribution. These are what we call raw scores. So a z-score is going to represent how many standard deviations away from the mean a value is. The raw score, or x-value, is going to represent a value in terms of the units of your problem, such as weight, or height, or distance, or whatever variable you are dealing with. Now it might be the case that you have a raw score that does not nicely correspond to one of the whole number z-scores. So for example, if I had an x-value or raw score of 57, that would fit somewhere between a z-score of 1 and 2 it might be nice to have a formula that converts between the raw score to the z-score, which is exactly what we're gonna talk about next. So, observations from any normal distribution can be converted into the standard normal distribution, that is a z-score, by using the following formula. To find the z-score, you can take your value on your distribution, subtract the mean of that variable, and divide by the standard deviation. This formula tells us to take an observed value x called the raw score and subtract the mean of that variable. Then at the end, we divide by the standard deviation sigma to find the z-score. Recall that z-scores are gonna tell us how many standard deviations an observation is away from the mean. Let's look at an example. Suppose the weight of a full-grown cat follows a normal distribution with a mean of 10 and a standard deviation of two and a half. In other words, our variable x follows a normal distribution represented by a capital letter N with a mean of 10 and a standard deviation of two and a half. Your cat Garfield weighs 18 pounds. You think he's a bit overweight, but you're not sure by how much. I wonder if you've met him. Let's find Garfield's z-score. To find the z-score, we can plug in to the z-score formula. The z-score formula tells us to take X, the raw score or observed value, and subtract the mean, and then divide by the standard deviation. In this case, the observed value or raw score is 18 pounds for Garfield's weight. We subtract the mean of all cats, which is 10 pounds, and divide by the standard deviation of two and a half. The numerator comes to eight, and the denominator is two and a half, so when we divide those two numbers, we get 
This tells us that Garfield's weight is 3.2 standard deviations above the mean. So here we have our standard normal distribution with a z-score of 0 in the middle, and then we're counting up by 1s to go to the right, and counting down by 1s to go to the left. We just calculated that Garfield's z-score is 3.2, so he's hanging out over here on the very far right-hand side of the distribution. Garfield's z-score tells us that he is 3.2 standard deviations above the mean, quite a bit heavier than most cats. You may remember from the empirical rule that 99.7% of the observations on a normal distribution will fall within three standard deviations of the mean. So if Garfield is 3.2 standard deviations above the mean, he's quite a bit heavier than your average cat, probably due to all the lasagna he eats. Now, in some cases, you might want to go backwards. Instead of finding a z-score, you might want to find a raw score. If you solve for x in the z-score formula by doing a little bit of algebra, first multiplying both sides by sigma, and then adding mu to both sides, you will get the raw score formula, which is x is equal to z times sigma plus mu. This is what we call the raw score formula. This will tell you, for example, the weight of a cat if you know the number of standard deviations you are above or below the mean, which is the z-score, the standard deviation, and the mean. This formula will help us find a raw score x given a z-score. For example, if we use the same example as before, where x is the weight of a cat in pounds, which follows a normal distribution with a mean of 10 and a standard deviation of 2.5, suppose Tom is a cat whose weight is 1.2 standard deviations below the mean. What is Tom's weight? Well, they're telling us that the z-score for Tom is negative 1.2, and therefore if we plug into the formula, we'll have x is equal to, well, the z-score, which is negative 1.2, multiplied by the standard deviation, which is 2.5, and then we can add the mean, which is equal to 10. If we plug this into our calculator, we should get 7. That means that Tom must be 7 pounds. Let's take a look back at our standard normal distribution. I've also tagged on the values for x. Since x has a mean of 10, which represents the weight of a cat, and a standard deviation of 2.5, I'm counting by 2.5s to either go up or down the distribution. We said before that Garfield had a z-score of 3.2 because his weight was 18 pounds. And now we have Tom, who we just calculated has a z-score of negative 1.2 with a weight of 7 pounds. So he is much more close to the typical weight of a cat than Garfield. Probably because he spends a lot of his time chasing Jerry around and therefore is in a little bit better shape than Garfield. Alright, here is a problem for you to try. Test scores in a class follow a normal distribution with a mean of 80 and a standard deviation of 7. In other words, our variable x follows the normal distribution with a mean of 80 and a standard deviation of 7. If a student scored an 89 on the test, how many standard deviations is this student from the mean? Remember, standard deviations from the mean are represented by the z-score, so this question is asking you to find the z-score. Secondly, if a student scored 2.4 standard deviations below the mean, which would be represented by a z-score of negative 2.4 since we are below the mean, what is the student's test score? This question is asking for the raw score, which is going to be a value for x. So use each of these two formulas to find the answers for these two questions. Alright my friends, that's all I have to talk about today related to the standard normal distribution. So hopefully you found it useful, and I will see you again in the next video.